Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you're logging in from. This is Jason with Partner First. I want to welcome you uh, real estate professionals that are finishing the uh, Q4 of 2011 nice and strong. We have a really good training today. On the line with us is our Director of Education, Jacob Swodek, and he's going to talk about a three-step NOD short sale listing campaign. And essentially what we're going to cover, or he's going to cover rather, is the step-by-step -step details of lead generating or a lead generating campaign that's helping literally hundreds of agents across the nation capture new business. So if you're uh, continuing to finish strong in 2011 or simply need some business planning strategy for early part of 2012, you certainly have arrived at the right place. So welcome. Make sure you have a notepad and pen ready. I did uh, peruse through the slides and I saw there's some scripts and some various key takeaways that you'll certainly want to have. For the premium certified members on the line, this uh, presentation, including the scripts, will be made available to you in the members area at the conclusion of this call. Uh, prior to getting started, I want to do a quick audio sound check. So on the right-hand side of the toolbar, you'll see a little uh, box there that says questions. If you could just go ahead and uh, hit the plus sign and open that up, and then type in, yes, I hear you, loud and clear, sounds good anything along those lines just so I know that we have good audio and of course I want to check uh, Jacob's audio as well because he is off-site so good morning Jacob how are you this morning good I'm doing fantastic thanks yeah let's get my audio checked and jump right into this uh, listing short sale listing campaign it's going to be a good one all right sounds good everybody's saying we're we're good to go David says we're good in Ohio uh, can everybody hear Jacob okay as well? Just get a few responses on that. Uh, Robert says he is audible as well. Little soft, but um, but audible. So, all right, sounds good. With that said, again, this is a three-step NOD short sale listing campaign. Tons of value, tons of information. You want to stay through to the conclusion of the call because we do a Q&A session towards the end, so you have an opportunity to ask questions. This call is live. So any questions that you may have, go ahead and type those into the question pane, and we'll go ahead and address those as well towards the end of the call. With that said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is D Jacob Sodek, our Director of Education here at Partner First. It's all yours, Jacob. Thanks again. And uh, hello, everybody. Let's jump right into our training today. Um, a little disclosure, this is a three-step NOD short sale listing campaign. But it's not just any notice of default campaign. You know, what I've found as a director of education here at Partner First, as well as an active agent who, who does this, uh, you, you know, who carries out these types of campaigns, as well as a, a coach who works with my coaching clients on these exact type of campaigns, what we found is that the more hyper-specific, the more targeted the campaign is to a specific person or a person who has a specific type of loan, the, the higher level of success we get. So this is actually going to be um, central to the Chase uh, short sale program. You know, Chase uh, in late 2008 um, basically took over the Washington Mutual portfolio. Washington Mutual had a bunch of different um, lender servicers that it had gobbled up the few years prior to when they were just blowing up and expanding as a company. And so, um, you know, by say, by virtue of saying that Chase took over WAMU, in essence, they're also taking over, you know, all the PNC and the Long Beach Financial and many other services, which we'll get into today, um, or, or lenders. But that being said, Chase in the news recently and on blogs and on the Internet and just kind of water cooler talk, and I'm assuming most of you know about it. We talked a little bit about it in our uh, uh, last month's webinar about some of the um, trends and programs that different services are running right now is that Chase kind of made some some big news that they're offering anywhere from twenty to thirty five thousand dollars to um, homeowners uh, that are severely delinquent in order to do a short sale. It's an incentive program to kind of you know get off your butt and do a short sale. <clears throat> what they found is that in the cases of the particular loans that are randomly chosen. Um, it's actually a better financial model for Chase to sell these and give the big incentive than it would be to wait a, a year, year and a half, and then foreclose and sell it under market. So, um, so here's just some things to understand. Number one, this Chase program is not something at this time that you can opt into. You have to be invited, if you will. 
um, I did some real deep digging, and I can tell you that it's not even something that loss mitigation has orchestrated. This program was given to the marketing department at Chase. So it's the marketing department that randomly chooses um, uh, different borrowers for this program. But what I will say is that 99.9% .9 of the borrowers chosen were on the portfolio WAMU distressed uh, side. So these were not Chase originated loans or uh, prime type loans. These were WAMU subprime uh, that are severely delinquent that's receiving this letter. So that's who we're going to drill down on <clears throat> to send this out. There's no carrot dangling. There's no misleading of a homeowner. Um, the, the, the challenge is that we are going to be getting homeowners in essence excited about this program but we're not saying that we can get them in. We're saying that we're going to do some due diligence to see if they have been invited into the program. And, um, and I'll teach you how to do that. Uh, also, it's important to understand that um, the idea here is just to get some conversation going, get the phone ringing, um, and that not every, obviously, Chase loan is going to, uh, is going to qualify. So, um, but it's an exciting program, and it kind of gives you some um, excitement towards some of this low-hanging fruit that we have in our business. When you hear of a campaign like this, um, it should spark you. It should get you thinking, hey, how can I um, leverage this opportunity to help people in my community? So let's jump right into the first slide here. And um, let's look at step one. Remember, this is three steps. So if you're a premium certified uh, member, that you'll have access to all this. If not, uh, get your pens going. <clears throat> Number one, you have to have an NOD list. Um, cost. With this particular campaign, I, I recommend working within a specific budget. So here's the investment you're looking at. About 50 cents per stamp and, and paper, depending on um, you know if you're throwing anything else in the envelope and you're going to cause it to be more than the regular postage. But let's just say on average about 50 cents per stamp, uh, which includes your, your you know whatever paper or card you put it on, um, times two mail drops initially, plus yellow envelopes, which I'll explain later and the printing for the handout flyer, plus gas and time to visit each home in the NOD process. You may want to start at around 100 NODs, which is about a cost of $150. So between the stamps, the two mail drops, the yellow envelopes, and if you choose to do a flyer on the door knock piece, which we'll talk about, you don't necessarily have to, um, it's going to be about a $150 investment. So just keep that in mind. Some people might get all excited about this and say, I want to do 500 NODs, great, but just understand it's about $150 per 100 based on the type of campaign we're doing. Here's a note. In some states, NOD lists can be provided for free by title representatives. Um, in other states, uh, like Texas and California, you cannot um, get that anymore for free. Um, you can use whatever site you'd like. Um, I, you know, there's, um, there's Red X which is great. There's uh, there's a bunch of sites. I personally use agentpro247.com. They're an LPS-owned company, very um, recent current data, and I've never had a duplicate. I mean, they're really clean, and uh, you, can, you can get that very affordably. Um, I recommend asking for John Lee Hooker, um, who is their uh, manager and sales, their sales manager. We have a great relationship with him, and I, I do personally. And he's the guy who can get you set up and walk you through it. But use whoever you'd like. That's just a resource because people always say, well, who do you use? Well, we use agentpro247.com. So that's where you get your NODs. And what? who's the target? When you, when you pick up the phone and talk to John or you, if you're with Foreclosure Radar or if you use you know, um, um, you know, the Red X or whoever you use, you're, you're going to need to know what you're looking for. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking specifically in our target approach to loans that are serviced by J.P. Morgan Chase that are part of the WAMU portfolio that are in default with 120% plus loan-to-value ratio. So you're looking for stuff serviced by Chase but owned by WAMU, which is more important that it's a WAMU loan because more the, the more sophisticated um, default uh, you know, lead um, companies they, they, they give you the ability to track where the loan originated, not just where the loan um, ended up or who's servicing it today. And that's very important in this space, especially with these types of programs. So you're going to want stuff serviced by Chase today, WAMU portfolio, 
that is severely in default, 120% LTV. It's all the subprime stuff. This campaign revolves around the twenty to thirty-five thousand dollar borrower relocation incentive that Chase is offering some delinquent borrowers. We already talked a little bit about that. It's randomly chosen, um, and and the way it works, which I don't think I have said yet, is that they get a letter, and in that letter, it gives them an opportunity to um, to opt into this program. Matter of fact, if you just do a Google search for Chase short sale. $20,000 incentive, Chase short sale, $20,000 incentive. I think the first or second one down is a Phoenix realtor who has a blog who's well known, and he has a picture right there of one of these letters. There's a bunch of them floating around. <clears throat> but it is real, but they get the letter. The problem is that most homeowners do not open their mail when they are severely delinquent, right? I think that's a fair assumption. And so there's a good chance that they, if they did get it, they never saw it. And you know, people buy for three reasons. If we want to just you know take off our compassion hat and put on our sales hat, people buy for three reasons. Consumers do need, greed, or fear of loss. Need, greed, or fear of loss. So obviously, there's a need here. A lot of people need the money or need the short sale. But I think that that's an obvious one that most people utilize, and it kind of goes without saying. But I like to focus on the fear of loss. Oh my gosh, what if I got that letter? Offer me up to thirty-five thousand dollars, and I threw it away. And then, you know, your job as the realtor is to say, "Let me look into it as soon as possible." So you're creating that energy, and a lot of these um, letters do give expiration dates. So, so you can really focus on the fear of loss side in terms of uh, your sales psychology. So that's step one. You got to have your list. Step two. There's a little bit of a lag time here, um, so let me just wait till it comes up. Oh, you know what, before we go into step two, I wanted to just show you this screen. For people that are much more discerning, um, Washington Mutual is, uh, you know, when they were bought in late 2008 by um, Chase, you have to understand that they weren't just their own portfolio. They had just been in a very aggressive buying strategy uh, and taking over and merging with some large banks. So what I did is I kind of highlighted some of the ones that were the higher volume servicers so that you, you you know if you're really discerning you really want to maximize this opportunity you can also when you're buying your NOD leads you can look for stuff that was with commercial capital bank corp providian was a big one it shows the year of the acquisition um, home side lending out of florida was big uh, fleet mortgage did a lot of stuff um, bank united is still big today but they got out of the mortgage side uh, PNC Mortgage and Long Beach Financial. Those are the ones that I thought were the big one. Obviously, Great Western was a big, um, a, a big uh, acquisition, but that was back before the subprime craziness. I'm talking about the more recent stuff when you're doing this research. So you know, jot those down so that when you are ordering your leads, you know that when you're asking for WAMU, you're actually asking for all these um, or that that possibly could have originated the loan. <clears throat> That's just a little extra credit. Step two, let's talk about direct mail drops. Two direct mail drops. You're going to do two of them. So what is it you're sending? You're going to send a letter, and I'll give you the, the verbiage, word for word, in a, a few slides. Um, inside a yellow greeting card envelope with the address handwritten. I'm going to pump the brakes here. If you send out a printed out label on, in a white legal envelope, you might as well kiss this campaign goodbye. There's a reason this works, and, and this is a big part of it. It's in a yellow greeting card envelope. And well, Jacob, why not green? Well, green or light, a light green or a light blue is okay, but not a dark red, not a dark blue, because you want to just be able to handwrite these addresses. But yellow is what we do, and so let's not mess with it because it's what works. So you know, there's a few things. You can go to a store that sells um, thank you cards with a yellow envelope and buy those, or you can go to a paper shop. Most of the time, you're not going to be able to get this at an office supply store. You're going to have to go to an actual paper shop. Like there's Blake Paper here, and there's a few different paper stores here in Southern California. And you have to just order 100 or 200 or 300 yellow greeting card envelopes. So that is a huge part of the success of this campaign, yellow greeting card envelopes. 
and that you take the time to handwrite the addresses. It makes all the difference in the world because when you uh, send this to a person who's in default, you got to know you're competing with so many other, uh, so many others. Plus, w what would you think of if you saw a yellow greeting card with a handwritten envelope you, or, or envelope uh, with a handwritten address? You would think somebody's sending me a thank you card. Somebody is sending me a um, an invitation or a Christmas card or something. You, you think of it as a positive thing and you're going to have a higher open rate and a higher success rate, period, hands down. So <clears throat> that's going to be handwritten, on the address handwritten in a yellow greeting card envelope, and you're going to do two of them. The first one should be sent with letter A with your picture on it, preferably. I'm a huge um, proponent of branding, and there's another reason why the picture is so important, because you're going to be knocking on this person's door in a few weeks, and it's very important that you do everything you can to try to promote who you are, your face. You know, it's less about what you know and how great you are. It really is just about um, the comfort level of them knowing, okay, yeah, I got your letter, I've seen your face, and it builds instant credibility. Uh, I don't have time to talk about this for too long, but when you talk about branding, I can tell you, the experts will tell you that at least the one-third, 30% roughly of the flyer, the letter, the, the postcard, the, your sign, whatever it is, 30% should be your faith in your name, uh, period. And that's what the greats do. And if you, if you don't like it, you know, I don't know what to say because I have coaching clients that really fight on this. It's not about bragging. It's not about, oh, look at me, I'm uh, a supermodel. It's about them knowing your face, period. It's about when you see them. I mean, I have this happen. I'm in Starbucks in my neighborhood where I farm pretty extensively. And people will say, uh, hey, you're that guy that did the, um, uh, you know, the ice cream social uh, last year. You're that realtor guy or you sent me, you know, the L.A. Lakers schedule or whatever it is. And so people start to know your faith. It's very, very powerful. Just take my word for it. So uh, the first one should be sent with letter A, which will go over with your picture on it. And the second one should be sent with letter B one week later. Um, with your picture on it, preferably. So that's a two-step mail drop. We're going to go over what these letters look like. Um, let's look at letter A. Now, if you want to get super fancy, which I want to encourage you to do, but at the same time, I know that not everybody will, instead of putting Dear Chase Borrower, you can build into your, whether it's Outlook or whatever you're using, you can have it change the, ad, uh, change the name for each person specifically. Um, if you if you want to get that fancy, so that's your call. I love it if you did. But if you don't, um, you know your impact might be slightly discounted, but you'll still have a, a decent result. So, dear Chase borrower, I really hope you've been opening your mail that your service or Chase has been sending you. You're getting right to the point. Recently, they've been offering homeowners that are delinquent between twenty thousand and thirty-five thousand dollars as an incentive to short sell their home, depending on their situation. Here is a link to a recent article about it in the New York Times. So I took that long, long article and I created like a, a bit.ly, which is a URL shortener. So that one is still live. So that, that site, and that's probably the best article you'll find in terms of credibility because it's New York Times and um, it's larger than life. If you haven't been opening your mail or you want to know if you are eligible, contact me quickly so we can um, help you find out. I'm a reputable realtor in the area, and it is my mission to make sure you know all your options when in default. Sincerely, Robin Banks, ABC Realty. That's my own little joke because we try to stick it to the bank sometimes. But whatever your name is, sincerely, you know, Joe Schmo, ABC Realty. So this is the first letter. It's not saying how great you are. It's not saying all their options. It's very, very specific to this program. And in a polite and conscientious way, you're sort of letting them know, hey, you may have missed out on something great. Call me ASAP to find out. Now, I want to manage some expectations here because I know the way realtors think. You're, some of you will think, you know, I love these two letters. I'm just going to do that, and I'm not going to follow up with the door knocking piece. Uh, but the problem is that that's not where the power is. The power is in the door knocking piece, period. If you get a call off these letters, that is fantastic and it will happen for a few of you but a very few of you uh, 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 you know this is not the point to get them to call off these letters it's just not statistically um, realistic and I'm very into what's real and being able to predict value 
So don't stop short with these letters. You've got to follow up, follow all the way through. And that's just the coach in me talking, but just believe me, that's the way it's going to work. So this is letter A. You kind of can see that. Um, well, this is once you have your list and you've got your yellow envelopes and you've got your, you know, your, your letter with your face and name on the bottom and you're ready to go, this goes out. Um, then letter B, which uh, we'll give you the instructions on, is one week later, letter B, assuming they did not contact you after they received letter A, obviously. Uh, letter B goes out. Remember back in the former slide we talked about one week later. And it's important because people forget about you. You don't want to do it a day later or two days, but a week is a good enough time. They're getting their second yellow envelope and it's like, man, this person's persist persistent. <clears throat> and look, I'll, I'll tell you the whole vibe, uh, the whole spirit of this campaign is about assumption. Like everybody wants $35,000, right? It's very positive. It's not slimy. It's not salesy. It's very... I wanted to let you know about this program. It's so exciting, you know what I mean, without being uh, insincere about it. So just pick up on that vibe. It's not a slimy sales. This is about uh, you know, promoting an exciting thing that they may qualify for, and you just want to let them know if, if it's something that, that they can participate in. So this is letter B, a week after letter A. Dear Chase Borrower, last week I sent you a letter about the $20,000 to $35,000 Chase Short Sale Incentive Program. I have not heard back from you yet. This is a legitimate program and it has a time limit, or you can even say an expiration. Please contact me as soon as you can to discuss the program. There is absolutely no cost to you. I look forward to serving you. Sincerely, Robin Banks, ABC Realty. This is a follow-up letter. You're clear about the letter, and you're now saying, I haven't heard back from you yet. Like, you're shocked. You're surprised. Hey, how come you haven't called me back? This is a great opportunity. How come I haven't heard back from you? I'm sort of shocked. I even sent you a letter in a yellow envelope, and I haven't heard back. What is going on? So you're starting to plant that seed. And it's making these people who are opening these letters go, hmm, this is, feels different. This is not your typical, I'm an investor, and I have a buyer, or I want to buy your house. This is uh, somebody reaching out to me. They seem like they're really wanting to, uh, to connect. Maybe it's worth it for me to just give them a call. I mean, that's the seed you're planting. So hopefully you can pick up on that vibe. It's very, hey, I haven't heard from you kind of like what's going on not not angry but just surprised like who doesn't want 35,000 or at least who doesn't even want to find out if they qualify for 20 for 20 to 35,000 so that's letter B that goes out a week after letter A yellow envelope same thing and then we're going to get to step 3 <clears throat> step 3 is knock on the door with this script please if you just joined us do not just do step one and two and leave out step three. Now, I know there's people calling where it's freezing over there. Um, I have a, one of my coaching clients, Dustin, who is going to do step three where he lives. It's cold. He's going to go out because he can stay in your car most of the time, and he's going to go out dressed as Santa <laughs> and do step three because it's like, hey, let's just get people smiling. Let's get this program going. But um, I know in certain places it's below freezing at some times during the year, and this is impossible. But I just want to stress the importance of step three. And if you're in California and it's 58 degrees, get over it, right? Put a thermal on. Um, that's not too cold to get out there. So here, let's look at step three, which is so important. This is the driving factor. This is what brings it home. Please understand that. About three to five days after, the second mail piece should have arrived. So this is mail piece one went out. A week later, mail piece two went out. Predict two days later is when they should have it. Three to five days later, you want to get out there and, and you want to make a plan to knock on each door, preferably during a time when someone will be home. For example, Saturdays or between 4.30 and 6.30 on weeknights, which I think is kind of the sweet spot uh, traditionally for um, door knocking. Dress business casual, um, and all you need is a business card in your hand, or some will bring a flyer or something else, but I think it's very simple here. It's just a business card and a smile. You're wondering why they haven't called. Um, and here's what you do. Three quick knocks. Now, there's a whole logic to knocking. If it's just a, a quick two knocks, that usually means I left something at your door. Three quick knocks sounds like, whoa, somebody's here for me. Somebody's and a little firm. It makes, it makes all the difference in the world. Practice this with someone at home. Just do two quick light knocks, and that sounds like, oh, somebody left something. Three quick knocks, bam, 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 is like somebody's here, somebody wants to talk to me. It's not forceful, it's not angry, but it's definitely um, authoritative. I got something to say. 
Then you stand back four feet, roughly, a uh, few steps back at about a 45 degree angle, which by the way is a, a way of uh, sort of in body language you're saying, I'm not here to be aggressive, you're not charging at them with a a toe-to-toe -to -toe mentality, you're kind of at an angle and you're smiling, please, please, please smile. If it's one thing that you pick up on this training, you have to smile. It means all the difference in the world when they see you smiling um, and not having your hands in your pocket, when they're looking through that peephole, the, the chance is double for them to open the, open the door. Smile, it's so, so, so important. So when, or if they open the door, what you're going to say is, hello, I'm Jacob Swodek from ABC Realty. I haven't heard back from you. Now, some of you are going to have to take a Red Bull, drink a Red Bull before this working for you because it's a little bit uncomfortable, but that's what you want because you're shifting the leverage. Usually when you go to someone's door, they have all the leverage. Not now. I'm busy. We're eating dinner. Leave me alone. I've had cigarettes flicked in my face. I've been cussed at. I really have. So you're taking the leverage back in a nice, polite way. Hi, I'm Jacob Swodek from uh, ABC Realty. I haven't heard back from you. If you know their name, even better. Are you Jim? Hey, I haven't heard back from you. And don't wait for them to respond. Bail them out, but pause for three or four seconds. Let them kind of feel that, like, okay, why should I have gotten back with you? What is this about? I'm, now you've got my attention. You're, I'm a little confused. Or maybe they do remember you, and they're like, wow, this person's really wanting me to learn about this crazy program. It's very important. If you know their name, great. If not, I've not heard back from you. I sent you two letters about the Chase twenty to thirty-five thousand dollars short sale incentive program, and I wanted to come by to discuss it with you. You might say to briefly or quickly discuss it with you. This is by far the most amazing program ever offered by a major bank ever. So that's your pitch, ever, and just like ever, smiling, ever. And uh, and then if they don't say anything, then you go, did you get the letters I sent? Ask that question. Yeah, I did. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't quite, you know, let them talk, but give them that and give them a chance. And then say, well, what do you think about the program? And then smile and wait. What do you think about the program? This is, this is y your money question here. What do you think about the program? But you're excited. You're like, right? Isn't this great? And let them talk. Here's what they'll do, and I've done this myself. They'll say, "Sounds pretty good," but you know, I, I was telling my wife, I, you know, thirty-five thousand dollars. It seems like some kind of a scam. Uh, I sure would love to have thirty-five thousand. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't know if this is, you know, whatever it is their thing is. And then just go, "Sir, I totally agree." Matter of fact, it took me a while to really believe that it was. Um, I'm just looking at my slideshow. It took me a while to, to even for me personally to to realize that this was true. And I've vetted it out. I've talked to the bank. It is a for real program. And so you're so you're overcoming that, coming that objection. And then it's would you like me to see if you qualify? Very quickly, there's no charge to you. And then you're walking through the process. What are we doing? What's the call to action? It's I'm not asking you to, to sell your house through me. Although I'd love if you did. Don't get me wrong. But what I do is I have a third-party authorization, an LOA, and um, a letter of authorization, and I just want to um, get it to the bank, and let's see if you qualify. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. Great. So if they are open to having you look, um, if they are open to having you look into it. Uh, for them, here's the deal. You cannot request this program, as we talked about earlier. You have to be chosen by the marketing department in a somewhat random process. I mean, you don't have to advertise all that to this prospect, but just so you know, so that you don't say, let me see if I can get you in the program. None of that's true. It, you have to be chosen. What you're doing is you're finding out were they chosen. You're seeing if their name was on the list, so to speak. Um, you can, however, get a LOA, letter of authorization, and send it to Chase, just like you would on a short sale. And when authorized, give them the borrower's loan number and ask if they were ever sent any mail solicitation regarding that twenty dollars to $35,000 short sale incentive program, also known as uh, a list assist or the short sale incentive program. You will need to transfer to a person at Chase with access to that field. I'm just going to tell you it's not as easy as it sounds. You're going to have to do some dialing. But this is a great lead. This is somebody who's saying, yeah, find out if I can do a short sale with this incentive. So take the time because, you know, I don't want to lose credibility. I've done this. 
there's a list assist phone number where I've gotten gals on there that actually get me right through and can find out. There's other people that say, I don't know, I never heard of this program and I can't help you. And so you're going to have to, until you figure out the formula, you're going to have to do a little bit of holding and a little bit of transferring. Just keep that in mind, all right? I don't want to pretend it's easier than it is and lose credibility. But you can find out. It's going to take a little bit of uh, diligence on your part. You'll need to transfer to a person who understands that. But do all that you can to find out. If the answer is yes, well, that's easy, right? You go get the listing. Next bullet point, if the answer is no, then find out what other programs or incentives they may qualify. For example, half of $3,000 incentive, et cetera. Then you simply contact the borrower by phone and set up an appointment to discuss your findings with Chase with them in person. Here's where it gets interesting. They're going to want you to just tell them over the phone, well, did I get it or not? Then just say, I would say it's not that simple. There's some things we need to go over. While you're at it, can you just look through all of the mail you've received and, and let's have a conversation when I get there. You know, keep it interesting. Keep it going. Don't tell them no or yes on the phone. Unless it's yes, I guess you could. But I still wouldn't even do that because I wouldn't want them calling another realtor saying, hey, this other guy or gal found out that I qualify. Um, can you come list my house? Not that that would happen, but why would you chance it? Don't tell them. Just say it's a little complicated. Let me, let's me let come talk in person. Then you just aim to show them the wisdom of a short sale, talk about these other programs, convert it from a, I only want twenty to 35000 into the wisdom of a short sale. And, and you, and Because you already know that they're somewhat interested based on the fact that they let you contact the bank on their behalf and the fact that they are meeting with you and answering their door and, and talking about this program. So it's a three-step process. Get your NOD lead specific to WAMU originated loans or some of the other handful of um, institutions that wrote loans that became WAMU loans, which became Chase Service Loans. Um, secondly, the letter A and letter B go out in the yellow envelopes, handwritten. And then three to five days after it would have landed, not, not that you sent it, but three to five days after it would have landed in their mailbox, you go on a door knocking campaign and you just smile, you're casually dressed, and you're excited about this program. Think about it. This person at my door, at this door that I'm talking to, I could potentially have them get a check for $35,000 by doing a short sale. Do you know what that would do for your business? You could blog about it, talk about it, Facebook about it, tweet, tweet about it on Twitter, word of mouth. You can send out testimonials. You can show photocopies with the information blacked out of the letter that your borrower received or a HUD-1. There's examples of actual HUD-1s on the internet with people that got their 35000 It could help you as a realtor, not to mention help this homeowner. Get that enthusiasm and excitement when you go to the door and just know, hey, you know what? Even if I pluck a listing out of these 100 NODs, which I hope you'll get more than that if you do it right, um, it was worth your time and effort. And it's a program that's working. It's working all around the nation, and it really is about your enthusiasm, your ability to execute exactly as we talked about today, and and really doing a great job. So that's all I have. That's the three-step program. If you guys like these types of things, because we haven't done much of them in the past, let us know. Maybe type something in the uh, in the in the question comment box there um, if you, if you like it, because there's stuff like this we can do on a monthly basis. Uh, but you know, I just we want to know that our our premium certified members are committed to it, and that you like these types of lead generation campaigns. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and type it in there now or comment. Please start doing that. I'm going to hand it back to Jason, but I'm going to sit tight um, to field any any questions that may that may come over to me. So I'm going to hand it back to you, Jason. Terrific. Thank you, Jacob, for the uh, uh, great webinar. First thing comes in from Robert says, I, en I enjoyed this a lot. Thanks for the time. So uh, obviously I'd like to start off with a compliment. So thank you very much, uh, Robert. Appreciate that. Um, there is some question about the posting for the premium certified members. Yes, this uh, presentation will be archived and available to the premium certified members, uh, including the scripts, the dialogue, uh, the servicers list, and all those items uh, available to it. Uh, Jacob, just uh, real quick, if you want to go back, there was quite a few people that joined in late, and there was a, a question that came up. This whole campaign of letter A, letter B, and then knocking on the door, the three-step approach, is centered around one particular servicer in, in general, or bank, I should say. Did you want to um, briefly mention the bank and then where to uh, pull the data from? 
Sure. Matter of fact, I have control, I think, so I'm going to go back to that slide. Yeah, it's not just a generic NOD um, campaign. It is specific to Chase's recent program where they're offering twenty to $35,000 to homeowners to do a short sale. So if you look at the slide, step one, the target is loan service by J.P. Morgan Chase that are part of the WAMU portfolio that are in default with 120% LTV or more. This campaign revolves around this program, relocation incentive up to 35000 that Chase is offering some delinquent borrowers. And then the final piece we talked about in that next to last slide is that they cannot um, request this program. I guess they could, but they're not going to get it that way that it's something that they had to be chosen for. So if you put those two pieces together, what you're doing is you're creating uh, a, 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 a demand for information on this on your own. You're letting them know this exists. You may have gotten a letter. You may have not opened your letter. You may have thrown it away. I'm here to help you find out if you qualify for this particular program because I found out very clearly um, that, that it really is about um, being very specific in these campaigns. So, okay. so I hope Terrific. that answers your question. No, it does, and I, I think just for the for those that that came in a little bit late, it's it's helpful to know that this is centered around Chase, and then all their their servicing banks are the ones that they acquired. And you did a great job doing the um, the chain, if you will, of uh, Chase acquiring Washington Mutual, and then all the banks that Washington Mutual had a, had acquired in their their uh, aggressive expansion. A uh, question comes in from Eric, and it, and it seems a little bit more in, in regard to uh, client control and overcoming objections, but it's a good question. As you're going through the, the script of, hey, did you qualify, let me see if I can help you out, that, that sort of uh, track, the, uh, his objection is, if the homeowner says, why not give me the number and I'll call to see if I qualify, uh, Jacob, traditionally, how would you regain that or control that conversation with the, the homeowner? Say that question again. If they don't qualify? Sure, their response would be, you know, say, hey, you know, let, let me know if I qualify or let me look into the information for you. And the homeowner's response is, why not give me the number and I'll see if I qualify. Basically, I'll do it myself. Sure. You know what, that's a, that's, so, so to me, that's a buying sign. Um, and you could say, I would say that my, my real answer, and it's not going to be scripted at all, would be like, you can absolutely do it. I'll give you the number. Um, the reason that, that I would think that it would be better to work through me is uh, you don't have to sign a contract. Uh, there's no strings attached, but it's not as simple as calling up a phone number. It really is a matter of navigating through their customer service maze and getting to the right person who can look it up. And, and then I know how to ask the right questions that if they, you don't qualify for that program, what programs do you qualify for? Mr. Jones, you have to understand this is not something that is, uh, is, is, uh, is being advertised in the mainstream. This is something that is a specific marketing campaign and the point of it was to get these conversations going on on a nationwide level. People like you and I talking about this Bigfoot sighting, these $35,000 short sale incentive programs and my job is to narrow it down and see which one of my clients qualify for it. So by all means you're you're welcome to but, I, but, but good luck because it's not easy and it's probably a good hour and a half, two hour process. Is, is your And then I would follow it up, any good sales, you follow up by saying, is there a reason that you would not want or, or that you'd feel uncomfortable about me finding that out for you? You know what I mean? Then, then it's just objection overcoming. But, you know, if that happens, that's okay. You know, but I, I try to get control. Um, and, and, you, and, you know, I, I'm trying to be generic about it because it's me. I would say, hey, I sit on panels with these guys. I have the opportunity to kind of go back door, if you will, and, and get a get an answer quicker, and you know, so I would so I would leverage my sort of position in this industry as a way to get overcome that. If I didn't have that opportunity, I think I would just talk about how difficult it is and how and how long it takes, and that you would you'd love to do it as a free courtesy for them with no strings attached. Right, absolutely. No, great information, completely invaluable, especially for those agents that are finishing the year strong and sitting down and saying, okay, how am I going to attack 2012? What am I going to do? What is going to be my lead generation strategies? And just a reminder to our members on the call, we archive and record all the webinars that we do. And Jacob has done some phenomenal pieces. This is just one of many in regard to lead generation, working with uh, short sale buyers, scripts, door knocking campaigns. 
and they're all in the archive members area. We just updated the website yesterday, made everything much, much easier to find. No longer is it archived by month, but you can search by topic. So if you're looking for door knocking or marketing materials, all the information is easily accessible. So um, if you're, you're sitting down planning 2012, you may want to spend some time this week and uh, research and view some of these past webinars. And in moving forward, Jacob, I think uh, there were some responses to your question of, you know, would you like to see more on lead generation? Uh, Sarah says, great webinar. I would like to hear about lead generation, about other lenders. Uh, there's other people saying, hey, I would love to, to get some more tips on lead generation. So, you know, as we're planning, you know, our training schedule for Q1 next year, we should really uh, focus on the training and the lead generation. And as a reminder, we do about four to six webinars every single month, and it's, it's very helpful to, to peek in on these and, of course, view the recorded ones that you can. So maybe we'll uh, put that together offline for uh, the, the beginning part of, of 2012, Jacob. Yeah, I love that idea. And you know me, I love the lead generation side because with 6.3 or 6.4 million loans in default, the, the, the opportunity has never been bigger than today than it is right now. So our job really um, as realtors is to find out where are the fish biting, where is the greatest opportunity, the low-hanging fruit, and let's, uh, let's continue to survive and hopefully even thrive during this downturn until things get a little better. So yeah, no, I'm on it. I think that you and I can come up with some great uh, topics and campaigns for, for next year. Sounds good. Well, just a reminder uh, for the members on the line, please log in and download this one. It will be up within the hour, and you can use it for a great training within your office as well if you're a team leader, broker, manager, or anything along those lines, or if you just want to share it with your assistants or, or team members. Um, again, there are, uh, if you're not sold on the lender-driven, lender-initiated, top-down short sale model, and you're thinking, ah, December, the the certification is, is pretty hard to obtain. We do have a membership uh, website option only, which is $45 a month. Uh, obviously, you're not available for, uh, eligible for lender-initiated short sales, but you do have access to all the training and resources available. And uh, that's as easy as $45 a month, no contractual obligation. So you have access to all this information. Guys, uh, if you have any questions about this or uh, anything else concerning Partner First, please feel free to give uh, Partner First a direct call. Toll free is 877-363-7714. And uh, I, my direct extension is 813, but you can speak to any of the ARC or agent relations coordinators directly. Again, that's 877-363-7714. Jacob, I want to thank you for your time today, and uh, on behalf of Partner First and our Director of Education, Jacob Swodek, uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. It was fun. Take care.